Everybody out there in the uh, music community, this is Mike here, um, our Soldier 777. Uh, this uh, this episode is going to be going to be a, a contest response video to Ron Haggerty's Vinyl Pasta. Uh, Ron uh, sort of revamped his prior channel, uh, got rid of his videos and added posted new videos, and he built it from scratch. Now he has 150 subscribers. So congratulations, Ron. Uh, so Ron won, uh, had a contest going on up until in September where he wants to answer some six basic questions. Um, so basically there, he wants to know what our favorite year was and six questions really relating to that year. So let's get right to it. So the year I choose was 1986. And the reason why I choose that year because that was the second wave of bands uh, that I liked. Uh, for that time period. Um, I got into uh, Christian hard rock and metal and rock back in 85 and the bands I got into was Petra, Dinger Band, Red, Striper and Jerusalem and that was what I call the first wave. The second wave um, was um, bands like Blood Good, Baron Cross, Messiah Prophet and Saint and uh, Whiteheart. Those were the types of bands uh, got, into, got into and um, still into this day. Um, I heard of Whiteheart there before '86, but I got into that band in '86. And the other bands, that's when I first heard of those bands, was in '86, '87 periods, those other bands. So, so I choose a year 1986. Okay, so the first question was what is an overrated album? Not that the album was bad or like that, but he asked pretty much what to know what's, what's an overrated album. I'm going to pick. Uh, and the one I choose for that one was Petra Back to Street. And uh, here he had the vinyl and the CD version of that. There you have it. And um, the reason why I chose that was because it is a good album. Um, it was the first album that Greg Voltz left Petra in 85. Uh, and John Sliz joined him in early 86. It's not that it's, it's, um, it's a, it's a, I mean, Back to Street is a, is a good album to follow up uh, to Beat System. As you may know, Beat System is more a new wave album. And Back to Street went back sort of to the roots of the rock, of the uh, rock, um, more of a straight ahead rock album. The, the thing I find with this album is it, is, it, is it has a very strong side A, but I do find side B a bit weaker, in my opinion. Now, I mean, the two ballads, um, uh, Thankful Heart and Fool's Goal, they're good tunes. But the three other three rock tunes in that album, it, uh, it takes me some getting used to it. I haven't got into those tunes as much as I, I, I could be getting into them. But I do enjoy the first side quite a bit. Like Back to Street, Here I Am, uh, Shaking the House is my, one of my favorite tracks in the album. King's Ransom, The Whole World, those are great tunes. Uh, but the other ones, um, uh, Another Crossroad, Run for Cover, and Alter Ego, I find those songs a bit, I don't know, something about them, I can't quite put my finger on them. But I mean, like I said, overall it's a good album, but those songs to me seem like they're lacking or something, in some respect. But anyway, um, but like I said, I do like the two battles, Thankful Heart and, um, and Fool's Gold. Fool's Gold is more of an acoustic type of tune, uh, starting off there. There you have it. Underrated album is the next question wants to ask. I think an underrated album, I think, is Messiah Prophet, Master of Metal. This is a great album, a very solid album from front to back, eight great tunes. And a lot of you are familiar with this, uh, this uh, album. We got uh, Hit and Run, Master of Metal, For Whom the Bells Toll, Fear No Evil, Heavy Metal Thunder, Their Friend, Battle Cry, and A Voice is Calling. Um, the band around 80, 89 uh, sort of broke up. Um, I think they made an attempt to record a follow up to this album, and uh, with no success, they disbanded uh, for a while. And um, they did record one song called Blinded. That sounds some sort of um, ultimate metal compilation album. Uh, it's out there on YouTube if you want to hear it. Um, but other than that, they haven't recorded a follow up to this album. Besides Colors 1996, which is the, which doesn't have any of the uh, members that was on this album, they all have new members, 
and I believe the one of the record execs of Pure Metal or Refuse Group, uh, I think he had some kind of controlling interest in the group, and he regrouped, regrouped the band in the mid nineties under completely new members, and they put it up in color, which is a totally different style. This is more like classic heavy metal. So the band was right on the success of this album for a year or two after it was released in '86. But it went nowhere after that. And I think if they did a follow-up follow up in 88, like Saint did with Time's End with uh, Twig for Living, um, I think they probably got, would have got more rec recognition. So anyway, this is what I would consider an underrated album. And I think it's a really good album, uh, in my opinion. Next one's a comeback album. Again, I'm refer to Messiah Prophet, uh, which is a good comeback album. Um, the reason being because the, they put an album 84 under, I believe it's Marauder Records called The Rock the Flock. And uh, there's an okay album, but this is a more of a comeback album, in my opinion, because it's a very strong album. That's why I think it's a good comeback album. Um, favorite debut album. And the favorite debut album from that year, I think, is going to be Baron Cross, Rock for the King. Uh, it's a very good album, um, in my opinion. Got nine tracks. Here's a back of it there. And, um, I mean, you got great tunes like Dying Day, It's All Come True, Going Nowhere, uh, Rock for the King, uh, Give Your Life Just a Touch, and Like the Flame. Uh, some solid songs in this album, uh, in my opinion. This is a de debut album from 86. Um, they had a Believe EP from 85 uh, with the blue cover and white cover, which has six songs. So they took those six songs and had three more songs. This is why it became Rock for the King from Baron Cross. Uh, so, yeah, a good debut album for that year. Uh, the next one is Wishless from that year. Now, I don't have a, I don't, I don't have a wish list from 85, that's 86, sorry. Um, that I wanted to get, but year before, in 85, I think I wouldn't mind getting Daryl Mansfield Revelation. Even though it came out in 85, I think he had a good following in the year 86 uh, of the album, and uh, I guess became a cult, a cult favorite. Um, I think that might be his... Uh, fourth or fifth album? I think it is. Um, you have to put a few albums before that. Revelation is more of a um, rock, hard rock album, so I wouldn't mind getting that one. Um, and top five favorite albums from that year, my last question. So my top five favorite albums from that year would have to be, um, of course, number one would have to be, actually, I'm going to give you my last. Um, Number five would have to be Bloodgood, their debut. And nothing more needs to be said about this one. Number four would have to be the Daniel Band, Rise Up, which is a very good album. Uh, next will be Messiah Prophet, as it should be fourth number three, Master of Metal. There you have it. And number two, I think would have to be Saint. There you have it. And I got the vinyl to uh, stripe. Oh, sorry. My mistake. I got a vinyl of Blood Good. Here should happen as well. And, uh, and from Isaiah Prophet, I got a vinyl for that one. And of course, for Saint. There you have it. That's number two. My number two pick for that year. And of course, my number one would have to be Striper. So uh, 12 to double. And uh, not much needs to be said with that album. That album. I also have the vinyl. That one as well. There you have it. And my copy is, I believe, the UK pressing of Music for the Nations. There you have it. Okay, folks, and okay, Ron, this is my um, 
this is my uh, contest entry hope you guys like it um, and I'll put a link to Ron's channel uh, in, the, in, the, in the description below you guys can go over to the channel and check him out um, he's a fellow believer in Christ and he has a lot of mainstream music he also has a lot of Christian music as well um, and he also into uh, like many of us are mostly into like rock classic hard rock rock and metal He's into like different types of music, like country, like a bit of jazz. Um, I believe he likes old school blues, not mistaken. Country, like he likes Johnny Cash, that kind of stuff. Ambient music, instrumentals, that kind of stuff. So he likes different styles. So run over and check check out his channel. Uh, it's Ron Haggard's Vinyl Pass. I'll put a link in the description below. Okay, all the best. Have a great day. Bye now.